In Creo Parametric, you can use multi-body modeling to turn a part model into an assembly mechanism. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have this part model, and again, it's all just one part, one body, and I've got these features for the handle, and I really want the handle to be capable of moving like it can in the real world. So I want to take a bunch of features and put them into a different body and then take the bodies and make an assembly with mechanism connections. I've done some investigating in this model and I found that, yep, there's only one body for all of the geometry in here. And there are four main extrudes that contribute to that handle geometry. There's extrude seven, there is a mirror of extrude seven, extrude eight, and a mirror of extrude eight located over here. So let's edit definition of those four features in order to put them into a new body. I'll start with extrude seven, edit definition, and then go to the body options tab, and I will create a new body. Now I will hit the check mark. Here you can see in the model tree that we have body two, and now the top node is in red. I ended up with a regeneration failure. Let's take care of that. I'll go to the round that's failing and then use edit references. And I can see that edit references for some reason ended up losing the edge that it's looking for. And this is what can happen when you change geometry from one body to another body. Well, the surface IDs and edge IDs can get mixed up, and so that's why this is failing. And with edit references, it shows me where the reference should be, so I can just pick what's there instead, and then hit the OK button. And now the regeneration failure has gone away. Let me go to the top of the model tree. If I expand body two, it's got extrude seven, and it's automatically got round four along with it. Let's go to the mirror and edit definition of that one as well, and then go to body options. And I'll click in the collector for the body that it's going to be used for adding the geometry, and instead pick body two, and hit the check mark. And again, we get a regeneration failure, so I suspect the same thing has happened again. Let's go to round seven and then use edit references and then pick the one with the red dot next to it. Yep, some ID got changed. So it says, hey, I don't know where my edge is. So I will pick the edge that should be used instead. Let's click OK. And let's see, I need to do that for extrude eight. Let's select that one, edit definition, and then body options. Let's select body two. Let's click in the collector and then select body two as where it should be added and hit the check mark. And let's see, you can see that we're getting quite a few features listed in here. There's one more I need to add in here. Oh wait, another round failed. Let's edit references. Yeah, again, it's got an issue with an edge. And hit the OK button. All right, now let's expand the other mirror, go to the other extrude and then edit definition, body options, click in the collector. Let's scroll up in the model tree and then select body two and hit the check mark. And so we have another failure. So again, just chasing these different edge references that end up getting changed. All right, select the new one. Okay, so now I think I've got everything that I want in body two. And I can test that by selecting body two and try hiding it. Yep, that looks good. Let's bring it back. And I can also hide body one to see, yep, there we have everything that is in body two. And to make it easier to understand, I will right click on it and choose rename. And then I will call this the handle just so it's a little more intuitive. Now that I have this in here, I know that I'm going to need some references for making a pin connection in the mechanism. Let me turn on my axis display. And right now I really only have one main axis going through the body. Let's scroll down and I'm going to find, 
Here's extrude 7, and if I expand it in the model tree, it's based off of sketch 9. I'm going to use sketch 9 in order to create a datum axis. Let's edit definition of sketch 9. And then if I take the point command from the datum group, if I drop a point right here, when this sketch gets extruded, I'll end up with an axis there. So hit the check mark. And now you can see that we have axes where we want to have a pin connection. Now that I have my axes, let's create some components out of the two bodies. I will select body one, right mouse click and hold. Then let's choose create part from body. And for the name of the body, I'm going to call it nozzle body. Click the OK button, and here I have the nozzle main body. If I take a look in here, though, let's turn on our axis display. Okay, it is turned on. I don't have the axis in the body over here, so I want to get it. Let's go to the model tree. Here I have the external copy geometry feature that was created when I created the part from the body. Let's edit the definition. And then I can click in the References Collector. Let's zoom in over here. I'm going to make the accessory window a bit bigger so it's easier for my eyes to see. And now I can select, grab that axis, hold down the Control key. I really only need one axis, but I'm grabbing both of them. Now when I hit the check mark, hey, now we can see the axes in my extracted part that I can use for a pin connection in the assembly. Let's go back to the part. Let's go to the handle body, right mouse click, create part from body, and let's call this the nozzle handle, and click the OK button. And here we have the nozzle handle. Once again, I want to use the axis for my pin connection, so let's edit definition of the copy geometry feature, click in the references collector, and then I can grab this axis, and I only really need one of them, but I'm picking both of them. Then I can hit the check mark, and so there, well, you can sort of see, it's just brown on a gray background, but I do have my axes in here for use. Okay, now let's create our assembly for these two components. I'll go to New. Let's change the radio button to Assembly. And I will call this my Nozzle Assembly. And let me... I think my config.pro option for my default start assembly is incorrect. Let's select one of my default templates. And now I can start bringing in the components. I will hit the Assemble button. Let me go to In Session because I've not saved it out to disk yet. And let's grab the nozzle body part. And for this one, I can right mouse click and use the default constraint to locate it. Let's hit the check mark. So there it is. Now let's assemble our second component. Once again, I'll go to In Session. And this will be the nozzle handle that I created. Let's just move it a little bit more where I want it to be. And in order to get the motion, I need to change this from regular constraints to a connection. This is going to have one rotational degree of freedom, so that corresponds to a pin connection. And for the axis alignment, I'll pick the axis here, and then let me use my filter. I was getting some edges in there. Let's just make sure I'm only capable of picking axes. And then for translation, we want to pick this flat surface and this flat surface. So there we have it in the right location. And I want to limit the range of motion. Obviously, this should not be capable of rotating 360 degrees. So let's click on rotation one so that we can define some references. And I will define an angle between this flat surface. I'm going to pick the surface on the underneath just so that I end up getting this angle over here. So right now it's at about 60 degrees and some change. I will use this button in order to set that value as my regeneration value. Let's check the box to enable the regeneration value. 
and I will also set some minimum and maximum limits to prevent it from rotating through 360 degrees. So let me see, let me grab this and say, okay, I'm just gonna eyeball it a little bit. So it looks like, eh, let's make it 27 degrees as the minimum value. And then let's grab the handle and then drag it and eyeball it about over here. Okay, so that looks, hmm, let's say 165. So let's set the maximum at 165. And then let's just drag it back a little bit more towards the other way. But again, I've got my regeneration value set in here. Let's hit the check mark. And so in that way, now I have that single part model being used as an assembly. We can also use the drag functionality and click on here in order to test the range of motion. But this is what I want for my assembly mechanism. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.